Good morning and welcome to our Metro-wide UCC joint worship service. In the Psalms, we read how good and pleasant it is when sisters and brothers dwell together in unity. What a blessing it is to be together this day. My name is Chris Gilmore. I'm the lead pastor at Sixth Avenue United Church of Christ. And on behalf of my colleagues, Lisa Randall, David Barr, Terry Bowen, Tracy Hughes, Lee Bird, James Fother, Russ Kirby, and Serena, Selena Wright, who is on sabbatical, we are glad you are here. As many of us say on Sunday morning, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. As we gather this morning, we acknowledge that the land that we are on is not land that is ours. For those who are here in the Denver area, this is land, the land of the Sioux, the Cheyenne, of the Ute people. It's the land they cared for and spent time on, welcomed new life and buried their ancestors on, and considered much of it sacred. So we gather in humility and in forgiveness for it is stolen land. We gather this morning aware that the world is warming very quickly. We are seeing the effects of it much more often now. As we gather this morning, we do so with hearts that know there is much in our country that needs our love, our support, our prayers. So in that spirit, I invite us to take a moment and feel our feet upon the earth to calm our minds, to be aware of the spirit calling in our midst. We look over all the faces of those who are gathered this day. We give thanks for the gift we have to worship as we choose and the gift that each life is to this world. We prepare to worship God. We remember that each day God leads us to the deep, deep pools of peace, to the green lush lawns of grace. Each day, Jesus calls us to pour ourselves out in service, to anoint the stranger with hope. Each day, the Spirit shows us the community we can be, the church we are called to become. In joy, in gratitude, in love, may we worship God. Our hymn of gathering is being led by people from Salem United Church of Christ.
Today's prayer of invocation uh, is adapted from uh, a prayer by Father Thomas Keating. And it goes, welcome, welcome, welcome. God, we welcome everything that comes to us today because we know it is for our healing. Let us welcome all thoughts, feelings, emotions, persons, situations, and conditions. Help us let go of our desire for power and control, our desire for affection, esteem, approval, and pleasure of survival and security. Help us let go of our desire to change any situation, condition, person, or ourselves, and simply open ourselves to your love and presence and action within our hearts, souls, and minds through today's message, music, and common purpose as UCC congregations in Metro Denver. Amen. Good morning. I'm Reverend James Fother, pastor of the United Church of Montbello in far Northeast Denver. And it is my great joy and honor to be your preacher this morning. I am grateful to so many for this time together, but just want to take time to introduce myself to some of you who haven't met me. I came to serve the United Church of Montbello in March of 2003. Uh, my wife, Angel Collins Fother, is um, celebrating with me our 29th uh, wedding anniversary tomorrow, God willing, and the creek don't rise. Amen. And I'm father to two daughters, uh, two daughters who are East Angels, one, both of them, and CSU Rams, Danielle and Darren. And I, I would be remiss if on behalf of the entire conference, I didn't thank our outstanding conference ministry staff and Reverend Seward and Reverend Aaron Gilmore and uh, our own member, Reverend Dr. Anthony Scott, and thank our, our board of directors that has seen us through this uh, 100 year pandemic time that has been so taxing and, 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 and caused so many changes, cataclysmic changes in the way we all do ministry. And then I just want to say thank you also to the joint service planning team. Uh, thank you for inviting me to be your preacher today, especially Reverends David Barr and Reverend Chris Gilmore, my CTS um, <clears throat> fellow uh, alum today. I want to thank Reverend Liska Randall, who serves on the ecumenical board with me for the United Church of Montbello is an ecumenical congregation. We're sister churches with Columbine United Church in Littleton and Mountain View United Church in Aurora, where the Reverend Dr. Tracy Hughes is pastor. And I'm giving her a shout out because she's part of service as well today. Today, I wonder if you'd consider the message with me beyond all our weeping. Let's hear from the new living translation of Holy Scripture today, if we may, from St. John, the 16th chapter, verses 18 through 20, where it reads like this. And uh, we're joining Jesus and the disciples mid-conversation here. And what does Jesus mean by a little while? We don't understand. Jesus realized they wanted to ask him about it. So, so Jesus said, are you asking yourselves what I meant? I said in a little while, in a little while, you won't see me, but 
a little while after that, you will see me again. I tell you the truth. You will weep and mourn over what is going to happen to me, but the world will rejoice. You will grieve, but your grief will suddenly turn to wonderful joy. Hallelujah. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of God's own holy word. And let us pray. God of grace and God of glory, now send out your light and your truth. Let them lead us now so that the words which are spoken and the words which are heard may be the words of the truth of your gospel for the living of our days. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. I wish I could name for you a specific day, date, and time it happened in my life. All I know, all I remember is that it happened in my 40s. That period in my life that uh, Passages author, uh, Dr. Gail Sheehy called the flourishing 40s even though she would go on to say in that very same chapter, the work of adult life is not easy. Hallelujah. Each stage not only presents new tasks, but requires letting go of some of what worked before. Maybe that's it. It's something deep inside us that mourns and grieves, whether we know it or not. Each of us in our own stages, each of us, as we are working out these lives, God has blessed us with day by day by day, amen? So one question for us, the text beckons us to consider today is this, what are you working through in your own life, in your own stage of life right now? My own life's journey showed me in my mid forties that weeping can happen anytime. <laughs> Sometimes when I know it and other times when I don't, a, a tear streams down the side of my cheek, a, a tear that appears in the corner of my eye, the kind that makes my voice hoarse and quickens my breathing a bit. One of the things I was deeply grateful for and will remain so the rest of my ministry, beloveds, is the way we wrestle together, Rocky Mountain Conference, United Church of Christ, with the little while we hoped our journey through COVID-19 would be. The little while that became days that led to weeks, that led to months, and then even more. Still, right? We too could ask the divine one the same question the disciples sought from Jesus here to know in our text from St. John's Gospel. And what does Jesus mean by a little while? We don't understand. What is a little while for the divine one who lives in eternity and ponders the problems, challenges, and opportunities of infinity? Our creator we must remember is the author of wonder, the supplier of grace, the great painter of the stars and the heavens, the sculptor of the whole created order. Before Jesus launches into his farewell prayer in chapter 17 of St. John's Gospel, the prayer that many observers have claimed should have been the real prayer remembered by the church as the Lord's Prayer, we see the beautiful compliment of the disciples wrestling with their perception of something they could not understand, what Jesus meant by a little while. We see in these disciples 
to tears yet to be shed, future weeping that is coming. Jesus said it this way, truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. And in this statement is juxtaposition, amen? As though the disciples' experience will be somehow otherworldly, somehow different than what the world would be doing. And yet, in Jesus, I hear a sense of, of wonder, beloveds, and empathy for what lies ahead for both himself, for, 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 for he, Jesus, and for the disciples. In this summer season of 2021, We'll all remember Valerie Carr, how she invited us to live in wonder, in wonder of our world, in wonder of even our enemies, in wonder of the purposeful ways that God still leads us. Wonder, she wrote, is where love begins, but the failure to wonder is the beginning of violence. Once people stop wondering about others, once they no longer see others as part of them, they disable their instinct for empathy. This text, beloved, is our reminder too that we have tears yet to be shed as we move towards being together in hybrid church forms, in hybrid church methods and in hybrid ways now of living, there is uh, something being birthed, something coming in forms the world has not seen and not fully seen, some, some are already hybriding, amen? And the ones who haven't seen it is because it's just not been formed yet, amen? One commentator on this text noted that beyond the tears Jesus spoke of for the disciples to be shed, that in the earlier verses of chapter 16, Jesus too is speaking to the disciples through his own tears, through his own emotions for them, showing his emotions through these words of preparation, of comfort, and of concern. When, <coughs> when Maya Angelou, when she adapted the 1896 Paul Lawrence Dunbar poem, We Wear the Mask, into spoken word form. She wrote in part, we smile, but oh my God, our tears to thee from tortured souls arise. The good news this morning is if we allow them beloveds, our tears can become more than just expressions from our tortured souls for us in the moments ahead. If we allow them, our tears can become our teachers. Our tears tell more stories than just pain and grief. After all, tears also can accompany our joys. Tears can also accompany our hopes, our desires, and our plans, can't they? Sometimes with weeping comes a cleansing and a revelation. Sometimes with weeping there comes a certain kind of, of clarity we had not yet embraced before. Sometimes beyond all our weeping, there comes a certain kind of determination we weren't yet resolved about before. Such was the case for the baseball star, Jackie Robinson and his wife, Rachel. 
In the final chapter of Arnold Rampersad's biography of Jack, Jackie Robinson, the first African-American to play Major League Baseball, we learn that uh, Jackie Sr. and his beloved wife, Rachel, tragically, tragically lost their son, Jackie Jr. And that their unfinished business was perhaps grieving their terrible loss of their son together. One evening, their daughter, Sharon, visited the home, uh, visited their home after dinner. And she was walking from her old bedroom to the kitchen. She heard something that made her freeze. She said, as, as I entered the living room, I stopped, startled by the sound of muffled sobs. I stood listening for a minute, trying to identify the source of the sobs. There was a shadowy figure silhouetted by the light coming into the room from a full moon. As my eyes adjusted, I realized that the slumped body sitting on the couch was my father. Dad was sitting alone in the darkness, crying, unsure what to do. But then she decided to speak to him. Dad, why are you crying? Sharon asked. In a trembling voice, her father answered, first Mr. Ricky and my mother, then your brother. Now I wonder if I am losing my spouse. Having heard this, Sharon left him and tapped on her parents' bedroom door. Rachel Robinson had heard what was happening, put down the book she was reading and hurried to Jack's side, slowly. Oh, beloveds, hear this slowly. Over the coming weeks and months, they began to get over the raw pain of their son, Jackie's death. Finally, together, beyond all their weeping, I could hear and feel their resolve and their determination to heal. And if there is anything that this crisis of the pandemic has taught us, beloveds, it's that we will not get to God's destination for ourselves and for our churches without resolve and determination. In closing, I will remind us <laughs> In a devotion, our colleague, the Reverend Dr. Susan K. William Smith called the power of releasing grief. She encourages us that the wonder and power of God is beyond our comprehension. Our grief is large, but not larger than God. Our grief responds to the proddings of God who knows our grief, but also knows the power that has been planted with us to overcome that grief. And I'd add to that, beloveds, the psalmist says in Psalm 30 and verse three, you know it if you don't know it, you need to know it always and use the refrain when you need to. Weeping may endure for the night, it says, but joy, oh joy comes in the morning. The God 
who knows all our griefs. And this God we know in Jesus Christ determined a long time ago that our grief, beloved, our weeping, our wounds would not minimize us, but would instead strengthen us to stand up and stay up once we're standing up. <laughs> we are not sure of what tomorrow will bring, but we are sure of who holds tomorrow. Beyond all our weeping, beloveds, is joy. Joy in the morning and joy in the noonday. Joy that awaits you and yours and joy that is ready to greet you so you don't skip the weeping now, beloved. Don't hold all the weeping in. Don't hold it in. Welcome it. Welcome it. Reflect on it. And allow your tears to teach you in your todays and in your tomorrows. And may, may the God of infinite power, light, and love and mercy be your strength and your delight in the name of the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, I pray, amen, amen, and amen. Now I invite you to join in, however it is safe where you are, with our response hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. If you have a New Century hymnal handy, it's 438, and I'll sing one, two, and four. And if not, we'll have words on the screen. Well, 
now it is well with my soul one more it is well it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul dear beloveds let us gather in the spirit of prayer Let us bring our concerns for the world and for one another to God, praying, saving God, hear our prayer. God of the sea and sky, your world brims with glory. You have set us in the midst of a garden and trusted its tending to us. We pray for our good earth and the wisdom to care for it well, that generations to come may enjoy its fruits and revel in its beauty. Together we say, saving God, hear our prayer. God of the earthquake and the storm, your world is full of danger. Keep watch over your people and save them from despair. Strengthen and uphold them when trouble comes. Together we say, saving God, hear our prayer. God of power and might, the rulers of this world do not always seek your wisdom. Guide all nations in the ways of peace and up all the oppressed, even as we wait a little longer for your coming realm. Together we say, saving God, hear our prayer. God of healing and comfort, pain and loss are all around. Soothe the frantic embolden the fearful, ease the suffering of the sick, give peace to all who grieve, and hope to those facing death. Together we say, saving God, hear our prayer. All-knowing and all-loving God, we cannot always voice our hidden cares. We know you hear our silent prayers, even those without words. With trust in your sustaining spirit, thanksgiving for your sons interceding, and confidence in your coming realm of justice, peace and love, we offer these prayers in the name of Jesus, our Christ. And together we pray Jesus's prayer. Our creator, parent, mother of us all, who dwells within and beyond, Sacred is your name. May your holy vision for collective flourishing come to fruition among us. May your dreams of justice, love, compassion, and connection be enfleshed on earth. Provide us today with what we need to be nourished in body, soul, and heart. Forgive us for the harm we cause as we seek to forgive those who have harmed us. Lead us away from everything that destroys and liberate us from the hands of evil. For you are the ultimate source of hope. 
You are the ultimate source of healing. Your power with exceeds all power over. Your presence incites eternal wonder. All praise to you, our comfort and strength. Amen. We are invited now into a time of communion. If you haven't already gathered your communion elements, there is still time. It can be anything from crackers and water to coffee and coffee cake and, you know, whatever elephants eat. And all are welcome at the communion table, no matter who you are or what you believe. This morning, let us take a moment to reflect on the questions raised by the good Reverend Dr. Fother. What are we as church being asked to give up? What new thing is waiting to be birthed in us? What are you working through in your own stage of life on your own journey? In our grief and loss, how can our tears heal us? How can our weeping turn into joy? When we empty our hands of unresolved grief, grief and ideas that are no longer useful, Jesus will surely fill them with bread for the journey and a cup of new hope. We are going to watch a video by Reverend Selena Wright and then a short video of all of the altar tables of the churches that are present today. During the video, we will all partake in communion together, knowing that we will be nourished with soul food and fortified with hope for the journey. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it. And he gave it to them and broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, when they had eaten it, he also took the cup. And he blessed it and gave it to them and said, this is the cup of the new covenant shed for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim Jesus' death until he comes again. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Come to the table of grace. Come to the table of grace. This is Christ's table, not just yours or mine. Come to the table of grace. Come to the table of peace. Come to the table table of peace. Come to the table of love. Come to the table of love. This is Christ's table, not just yours or mine. Come 
of joy. Let us pray. To the author of wonder, the supplier of grace, the great painter of the stars and the heavens, the sculptor of the whole created order. We have gathered, we have sung, we have worshiped, we have heard that your joy comes to us and we have been nourished and fortified for the journey. Thank you for your infinite grace and mercy. Give us, we pray, the resolve and the determination to take all that we have received and share it with the world that you created. Where there are tears, let us be empathy. Where there is pain, let us be a balm. Where there is hunger, may we provide food. Where there is despair, let us provide hope. Where there are trials, let us provide joy. Help us to create a world where there is weeping no more, where joy comes to everyone, where justice, mercy, and righteousness roll down like a mighty stream. And we do all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Hi, everyone. I want to say thank you to Chris Gilmore for inviting me to just be present with you for a moment this morning. I just came off of two weeks of 15 hour days that were lovely and full of uh, camp magic. And so I just wanted to um, come and say thank you for the churches that supported their campers to come to camp this year. Um, I have never experienced a place so full of love as Laferay, and it's because of the people who come. And so I just wanted to share, I had a few pictures, but if we don't have those up, that's fine too. Um, just wanted to share a couple, just really quick stories. So we had grand camp this year and we had a first time camper who was six years old and she came with her um, little brother or her brother was six, I think she was a little older. But her first time ever coming, she came from the Western Slope, and when she got home, she told her parents, that was where I belong. Um, and so she came back the very next week for Pioneer Camp. I think that um, that kind of illustrates the, the things that can happen at camp. And um, I have heard from so many campers over, the past few years just say that it is one of the only places where they can be truly themselves. And I think that the reason that is, is because it is a sanctuary, it's a safe space, it's a brave space. And because when campers are there, they are valued as, as whole members of the community where they get to imagine and create and experience a world that is better than the world outside. Um, better than the world that we have handed to them. They get to create a new one. And I feel like that empowers them to work for that world, to work for the kingdom of God um, on earth. So I just wanted to bring you my uh, welcome from Lafrey. This is a picture of closing worship. Um, and also let you know that there, though the kids camps are over, the upcoming opportunity for adults is just around the corner. So uh, the end of August, August 27th through 29th, there's the Wholeness and Wellness Retreat, which is going to be hosted by a variety of people, including um, Anthony Scott and um, Aaron Gilmore. Um, we also have just an amazing selection of hosts for that event. And I would invite you all to come and experience for yourself the beauty and love and groundedness of La Foray. Thanks for letting me be here this morning. Don't be afraid. We 
pray together. As we go from this service of worship, encouraged to face a world beyond all of our weeping, to face it with determination and resolve because we are a people and each of us has experienced grief perhaps immeasurable in many ways. May we be willing to sit with others in their grief. May we be willing to learn from the tears they shed and the tears we shed. May we be willing to see others at the point of their pain and see them as the part of ourselves that we do not yet know and in loving them, be instruments of your grace in a world that is hurting. For it's in your name we pray, amen. Thank you all for your help with today, the musicians, Peter, Eric, and all of you who have joined us. Thank you for your time. Thank you.